Amber Wilson here with Marshall Folk. Marshall, let's start with the fun stuff first. I'm sure you've been to a ton of these. I have, I have, and uh, it, yes. The error around Super Bowl 43. Some people are saying it's down compared to Super Bowls of the past, just from an outside perspective, not the ones that you played in so much, but just having attended these as an analyst and, and you know, a party goer. How does this one compare, the buzz around it? I think the economy has a little bit to do with it. Um, you know, I believe people are not going to come and spend the whole week, like, uh, or maybe a week and a half like they normally would do in, into the city. But uh, come, I say, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, I think you'll see the people coming in, starting to fill the city. Um, and, and you have to look at the economy and say it's just it's tough. It's tough for a person to spend, what, $800,000, $1,500 for a ticket. That's a lot in these days. Has this been all work and no play for you? No, it has not. I've, I've actually had a chance to, uh, to make it to a couple of parties, uh, make a couple of appearances. Uh, but it's been fun. It's been fun. Glad to hear it. All right, let's talk about the couple that you did play in. Yes. We can't forget that. No. All right, you were part of the greatest show on turf. I was. I believe it was called. Arizona this year, they have a pretty high-powered offense. How would you compare the offense that you played on to the Cardinals? You know, you have the same quarterback, of course, but uh, a lot of different things, a lot of different components. Um, what I did, they used three guys to do. Uh, the receivers are, are, are much different, uh, much more physical group of guys that gets a lot of run after the catch. Uh, we have guys that were more route runners, that got open, uh, defeated coverages with their skills and abilities to run routes. But you look at these two guys, uh, Bowden is more of a guy that catches the short pass, makes the long run, and Fitzgerald as the, you know, the jump ball guy. They can run routes, and they, they do get open, but uh, physically they outman the opponent. So you think in a head-to-head -head matchup, these receivers versus your receivers, who's winning? Uh, they're good. They're, they're good, and, and my receivers were good, but I'm the wild card. I, I take it with St. Louis. I'm, I was the, I'm the wild card. All right, let's talk about the other side of the ball, too. How do you see Pittsburgh faring in this game? Well, first of all, go ahead and give us your prediction for Sunday before we have you break down Pittsburgh. That, that's a good one. I, I wish I could make a pick in this game. I'm, I'm still uh, baffled as to how this game is going to play out. Um, I, I keep saying it has a lot to do with Ben Roethlisberger. If he, if he plays the way he played during the regular season and turn the football over and, um, and doesn't throw it away and get sacked, you know, this game is, is, is the Cardinals to win. But if he comes out and play the way that he's played these two playoff games, I mean, they, they are unbeatable when he plays like that. All right, so Ben is the big question mark, obviously not the Steelers' defense. You do think, though, if Ben fumbles, because he did fumble in the last Super Bowl that he won, and it didn't seem to matter because he had that defense behind him. Well, they had some help from the refs in that game, you know, and uh, I, don't, I don't like to blame stuff on other outside entities, but uh, Seattle, without a doubt, um, they were hurt by some missed calls, some bad calls, and uh, the referees are human, but, I mean, if you were watching the same game that I was watching, without a doubt that was the case, uh, Ben, he's already came out this year and said that that, that game, he, he was nervous throughout the whole game. And I'm anxious to see. I mean, the Super Bowl, is, it's not like every other game, although you try to make it like that. What is he going to be like in this game? The team carried him in the first Super Bowl. He has to carry the team now. All right, let's go back to your playing days real quick. What was your greatest memory from your Super Bowls? Um, I, I definitely have to say Isaac Bruce catching the touchdown. Um, watching that ball go up in the air, Isaac making the catch, getting the cut, cutting back, Oz Akeem making the block, him scoring. And then, um, then uh, from that point forward, everything was fuzzy. And then Mike Jones made the tackle, and, and, it, and the game was over. And uh, I had accomplished uh, something that, as a kid, I ended every day I played football as. It was to win the Super Bowl. And now um, that was possible. And... Uh, you know, you just don't you don't you don't get to live out dreams. You don't get to play games and consider it a job and um, find this moment, find this moment in my career. So, is winning the ring was that the biggest accomplishment then, basically of your life? I mean, was that the most important milestone that you've crossed? Because obviously, you've been highly decorated your entire playing career, and, and now as a broadcaster, and I'm sure you've had a lot of other things go on as well. Is that the you know pinnacle? <laughs> I'd, I'd have to say. Um, uh, outside of uh, you know getting married and having like having kids, you know, <laughs> winning the Super Bowl with, with without a doubt, without a doubt, the most amazing thing that I had I had ever accomplished in my life. It, um, you know, that 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 was a dream. That was a dream. 
of a kid whom, you know, probably wouldn't get a chance of living that dream. And I, and I look back to uh, all my friends that I played football with. I mean, the endless amount of hours that we spent playing this game. They didn't get to live that, but they lived it through me watching me play. The entire NFL comes out for these type of events. You must have been running into guys all week then that were bringing back memories for you. You know what? Um, it's, not the, it's not the guys that I played with or played against. You know, it's the older guys, you know, getting the chance to see um, <laughs> Deacon Jones and, uh, you know, Wilbur Montgomery. You get, the, you get to see these guys, Thurman Thomas, Jim Kelly, Joe Montana. And, 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 and I remember uh, as a fan, as a little snotty-nosed snotty kid, you know, watching these kids, watching them play, like, fascinated. And now being retired, having played professional football, winning the ring, playing at a high level. Now I get to, like, chomp it up and rub elbows with these guys. It's amazing. Now they all know who you are. Yes, yes. <laughs> now you're the star. All right, one last question for you real quick. When, um, when you come to these events as an analyst, what changes from when you used to be a player? Um, what is the main difference with being part of the media now? Because, I, you know, you, have, you still have a lot going on. You still have a lot of work to do. You're kind of on the other side of things, though. Uh, getting up early. Yeah, okay. <laughs> getting up early. Uh, <laughs> that's for one. But um, I, I just have a different perspective on it because now I've gotten the chance to see it from uh, the media side and how it is promoted, the magnitude of this game, the significance, uh, how, this ga how this game will affect the city of Tampa um, with jobs and, 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 and bringing revenue here. Uh, the business aspects of football that you really don't know about. When you work the media, you start to understand. Do you miss playing at all, or is oh, this? Every day. Every day. I, I love my job. I love what I do. But there's nothing that replaces being in between the lines. All right. Thank you so much, Marshall. For more great videos, check back every day on opensports.com.